Hi everyone, welcome back this week. Some of you may have already seen a report or news on detecting the messenger RNA from COVID vaccine in human milk. I have to confess, that means a lot of us, including me, were initially wrong about the vaccine distribution in the human body. Now, I always try to bring a more complete picture to the story, so let's compare some older similar studies and see why this new study is different. So does mRNA from the vaccine really leaked into human milk? The quick answer is yes, but not always. Let's look at four older studies first. One of the first COVID mRNA vaccine and human milk studies was published in August 2021 by researchers in Singapore. They recruited 14 lactating healthcare workers who had received two doses of the Pfizer mRNA vaccine for the study. The participants were asked to provide human milk samples before receiving the vaccine one to three days after dose one, seven to 10 days after dose one, three to seven days after dose two, and four to six weeks after dose two of the Pfizer vaccine. In the end, 10 participants provided samples in all the time points, and 66 samples were collected and analyzed. The study first reported seeing SARS-CoV-2 spike protein-specific IgG and IgA antibodies in breast milk, suggesting the maternal immune response to the vaccine was passed to the milk. In terms of mRNA, they performed standard total RNA extraction in human milk and used RT-PCR to detect spike protein-specific mRNA sequences. Now, in four of the 40 samples they analyzed, they saw the detectable level of vaccine mRNA within first week of both dose one and dose two. The highest detector mRNA concentration was at two nanograms per mil, which would translate to 0.66% of the original vaccine dose being transferred in 100 ml of human milk given to infant post-vaccination in the worst-case scenario. So were the babies safe in this study? Yes. They reported that infants who consumed post-vaccination human milk had no reported adverse effects up to 28 days post-injection. A different group of Singapore researchers also did a very similar study, but this study has been in preprint since May 2021. This is a very small study. They reported no vaccine mRNA was detected in five samples that they analyzed. A better study was done by researchers from the University of California, San Francisco. The study was published in JAMA Pediatric in October 2021. They analyzed 13 samples from seven breastfeeding mothers who were volunteered for the study. Milk samples were collected 24 hours after getting either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. One sample was analyzed multiple times from 4 to 48 hours after collection. One slight difference in this study was that they suspected vaccine uptake and mRNA content may differ between milk fractions, so they analyzed the supernatant and fact separately for all the samples. In the end, they did not detect mRNA in all the samples, but they admitted that milk storage conditions might affect mRNA stability and make them non-detectable. The fourth study was also from Singapore researchers. The study collected milk samples from 35 lactating mothers aged 32 to 36. All of them received two doses of the Pfizer vaccine. The milk samples were processed a little bit differently than the other studies. They separate the fact layers and only analyzed the resultant skim milk. Five samples from four mothers, which is about 13% of the total samples, had detectable vaccine mRNA. This was out of 309 samples from 31 mothers. The average detector mRNA amount was about 7 nanograms per 100 ml. This was much lower than the first study we went over. Overall, none of the five infants in this study had detectable vaccine mRNA in their serum. So what makes this newly published study different than the older ones? 
It is all about locations. The main difference of this new study done by NYU Long Island School of Medicine researchers was that they tested mRNA presence in different milk fractions, including whole expressed breast milk, fat cells, and supernatant extracellular vesicles. Before we go over the result, let's quickly look at what extracellular vesicles are. Extracellular vesicles, or EV, is a broad term for all lipid bilayer enclosed particles released by cells into their environment. EV in human milk was first shown by electron microscopy in the 1980s. They are not present in formula milk. They can act like vehicles to deliver biologically active cargoes such as protein and RNAs. Notice that a special type of small RNA called microRNAs is found extensively in EVs. Now we will keep our thought here and come back to this a little bit later. The study by Dr. Hanner and his team showed that of the 11 lactating volunteers in the study, seven samples from five participants had a trace amount of mRNA from Pfizer and Moderna vaccine within 48 hours of receiving that vaccine. Now, these RNA was detected at the highest amount in the EVs, up to 16.78 picogram per mil, or about. 1.7 nanogram per 100 mil. Now, even in samples where RNA was not detected, they were found in the EVs as well. Now, no vaccine mRNA was detected beyond 48 hours after vaccination. The research team speculated that the nanoparticles containing the vaccine mRNA are carried to the mammary glands, released into mammary cells, and then packaged into EVs and excreted in milk. So, a trace amount of vaccine RNA in human milk—does it really matter? Now, we don't know everything yet. The fact is, the amount of vaccine RNA in EVs are very low. But all the studies we went through have not investigated how the vaccine RNA in EVs interacts with microRNAs normally found in the EVs. Studies have shown microRNAs from milk EVs are absorbed by infant intestinal cells and have a role in immune cell maturation, regulation of immune response, and formation of neuronal synapses, and may even affect the development of metabolic diseases such as obesity and diabetes later in life. So far, all the studies have shown that vaccine RNA is only present for a relatively short period, suggesting limited to no effect on infants beyond that time frame. However, the data on the immediate effect is limited currently because most of the studies have a very small sample size and are not enough to generalize. So, what does the official said? According to the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine website, which is still current right now, but was last updated on December 14, 2020, when the mRNA vaccines were first authorized, at that time there was little to no knowledge about how the lipid nanoparticle containing mRNA would distribute in the bloodstream and breast tissue. The assumption was that these events were unlikely, and even if mRNA were in breast milk, it would be digested in the stomach. Based on my understanding of drug distribution or pharmacokinetics, at that time I also believed that, that was the case, but I was wrong. Currently, the CDC continues to recommend the COVID vaccine for breastfeeding mothers. But with this new knowledge of finding vaccine RNA in milk EVs, the official may need to revisit this recommendation and provide a more balanced message to the public. Especially when they suggest we may get a booster every year in the foreseeable future. I know the majority of my viewers are not of childbearing age, but I hope this video is useful enough that you may pass it on to people who you know are expecting or who are currently nursing. Lastly, I want to thank all of you who have scheduled a talk with me about your experience on long COVID and COVID vaccine in the next couple of days. I'm so honored that 
a lot of you want to talk to me and most of the slots are currently filled. Now, in fact, I already talked to one of my viewers, Michael, a few days ago and he has agreed to share his vaccine injury story on this channel. If you want to hear more about his journey, please stay tuned in the next couple of days. That is all for this week. I hope all of you have a wonderful week ahead. Please take care. Bye.